the meantime, Johnny's Bite hashtag Johnny's Bite is actually trending on Twitter and we want to take a few reactions before we go ahead and talk about uh, a lot more of the stuff trending also this morning and all that we've discussed here. Now, Esther Ewia says, thanks for the good work, Johnny. You are doing for Mother Ghana. God bless you. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. God bless your courage to speak the truth. Um, Mamadou Baumia and his boss must sit up. Now, Prince Henry from Kofridia says, we are in a country where basic schools still do not have textbooks for the past three years. And we have the president promising to build 10,000 housing projects for teachers. Nana Kufuado, what is your priority? Now, there's a retweet here. Um, that says the children returned to school today without textbooks almost three years after changing the curriculum. Now, this one also says we are proud of you, Johnny's Bite. Now, um, this one, a Brantier elite also tweeted or replied and is saying, you brought a significant amount of hope to us, the youth, since you started Johnny's Bite. You are a gem of a journalist, sir. May you live long to witness your great-great-grandchildren living in a better Ghana. A better Ghana you are helping to build for them. God bless you. Now, Favor says, hashtag Johnny's Bite. All the issues discussed on TV3 by Johnny Hughes. Um, still, some youth are defending it. Oh, Ghana. Johnny, this is your own tweet 33 minutes ago. And it reads, we use ambulance to carry cement for free. Then turn around to demand for money for fuel to transport sick people. Those who fail to pay are likely to die. We are special like that. Hashtag TV3 New Day. Now, Favor also retweeted um, the Ben Crumbs um, tweet that reads, A nest in Ghana, and I say this um, without any fear of contradiction. It has become a norm in this country that before you use the services of the National Ambulance, one must pay. Um, mis misplaced priorities. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Okay, I'm not going to show that, uh, that. That's red. Let me just go and read a few more. Survival says both our politicians and J G GHS do not take mental health seriously. Of course, the Ghana Health Service. All mental health nurses have been turned to general nurses. It is common in all our hospitals, especially the Western region. So, hashtag Johnny's Bite trending on Twitter. Um, if there's time, I'll come back to read a lot more. But you can keep sharing and also retweeting any of these messages that resonate with you. It's still TV3 New Day. Johnny, over to you. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, interesting that uh, some of the conversations that we generate here uh, actually make uh, the, the waves out there. It resonates with the people. And for me, the question about the ambulances um, also um, it is a critical matter. I mean, since we spoke about it this morning, Bella Feather discussed it, you would notice that it's almost become a norm for people to make phone calls to say, I want an ambulance, and then you'll be asked to pay almost immediately. And I, I, I don't know why we will do that to ourselves. The ambulance services are supposed to be free. Um, just like when you go to a police station, a police has to go and pick up a suspect. It has to be free. You don't have to pay uh, a few other vehicles. So why are people asked now to fuel ambulances just to, um, if you will, get medical help? I don't get it. I actually do not get it at all. And I, I hope that the ambulance service is, is looking at this standard operating procedures. Um, who gets recruited into the ambulance service, for example? And what's their motive? And what kind of in-service training is given to them? Um, because we saw an ambulance being used to cut cement. So if it's being used to cut cement, and now human beings who the ambulance was procured for, were procured for, will have to... Um, what do you call it, now pay money to be transported. It's a, it's a worry. And you had the health officials, uh, the nurse, and there was another nurse who also said that, look, sometimes you call the ambulance service and, and you're making a referral, and the kind of questions that come to you is mind-boggling. I mean, these are lives at stake, and you'll be asked all manner of questions. Why? It's amazing. And wow. it's the same country mm -hmm. who is seeking for mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And we are speaking against self-medication. 
and it's 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 not only a challenge of ambulances mm. i mean it starts right from the bed even before the ambulance would come for you, mm. they would ask you if you have a bed that's right. in the hospital that they are transporting you to. But that's not your to. job. But if I am sick and I'm supposed to seek medical attention mm. in a country that I pay taxes to or to a government mm. that mm. I pay taxes, so what? I must look for my own bed. I must look for my own ambulance or fuel the ambulance yeah. and all yeah. that. And yeah, may I and I'm then you, give, you, give, be. you give them small. Exactly. Then if that's the case, I'll just go to a herbalist in my region or my area mm. who by tradition, you know, I've been told me. exactly can take care of me. So there's no need to even bother going to the hospital. I, I think that the, um, well, we'll go to the Ashanti region shortly, but I think that the thinking, that thinking is because, for example, Touchwood or Perish, that thought if Cookie is sick, I am related to Cookie. Yeah. Uh, Cookie calls me and I come and take yeah. care of her. Yeah. So there's always that, oh, somebody will bring mm, mm, the, the sick mm, person. So mm. those people who come to support the mm, person mm, who is sick mm. are the ones who are burdened, mm -mm. you know, with that that uh, that problem. To and take they are not them. professionals, you they know. They are not professionals. So you pay. But if you live in an advanced country, if, for example, I call 911, what's your emergency? And I tell them, emergency? this is yeah. happening to me. Yeah. When the ambulance comes, it won't ask me to fuel it. No. It won't ask me, uh, do I have a relative around? They will first give me some emergency uh, you know, attention. Yeah. And then when I'm stabilized, they can yeah. go to all those questions. It is the same thing that happens in our hospitals. I mean, there are some very good nurses and very good doctors and very good PAs and very good pharmacists. There are also some very worst ones out there. For example, you go to a hospital and you're hospitalized and they expect you to carry your own bed pants. Mm -mm. It, mm -mm. It, it, it's, it, it, they, mm -mm. They, the whole thing is, I mean, I don't know it's Florence Nightingale. That was what Florence Nightingale did. Mm -mm. But it, it's okay if people want to support. But then it becomes now the norm. This morning, somebody <sighs> has gone to maybe Kolebu or Ridge or Tech 7, and they are the ones supposed to be running around yeah. and doing all yeah. the things. So yeah. they are even going on to hold an uh, x ray, they are yeah. going to the pharmacy, yeah. all of those ones. They're doing all, they are doing all the legwork. So yeah. just imagine that you live alone, yeah. you have nobody. Yeah. Who is yeah. going to do that job? Nobody. The, the, the health sector needs to be re looked at again, all through, again. Hmm. But let's go to the Ashanti region uh, because our man Evan Sinkum is standing by. We understand that the youth of uh, Abura Accra Brokum in the Etriman Punya district in the Ashanti region are set to demonstrate that they want a fast paced uh, trial to the uh, killers of five miners in the Nyanawusu um, area in December last year. William Evan Sinkum is joining us now. He's in the community. Bill, Happy New Year and good morning. Well, Happy New Year. Good morning to you and Bella. Well, it's Cookie here. Bella is uh, out there doing some more official work. Now, why are the youth agitating? Well, they're agitating because to them, justice hasn't been served them. Uh, because they claim that these five people are innocent minors who are only going to Inausu just to ensure that they, they make ends meet. But they met their untimely death. Mm. I can tell you, um, Johnny, the issue between the Nausu community and Accra Bukrom is just like, I mean, flames, I mean, beneath a debris. It can just trigger at any time. And that is exactly what we are seeing here. The tension has still not doused because the youth are still agitating that they want to go to Inawusu and then wreck our deals. It's something that the um, District Security Council of Paris at Human Punia uh, is concerned, has been trying to prevent. They, are, they have become the stumbling block as far as this particular situation is concerned. But today's demonstration, more or less, will serve as a litmus test to the security here. As to whether there is not going to be any future retaliation, today's demonstration will determine that. But what they are saying is that there hasn't been any, any effective justice served on them. What I can also tell you, at least from what I know, mm. that two people are currently facing um, trials as far as this particular development is concerned. But from some private, I mean, interaction that I have had with, I mean, the investigators, it doesn't look like they are too sure that these were the few of, I mean, these two people were involved in the actual killings. But then they just want to use them as a conduit in order to get to 
the real people who actually perpetrated this particular crime. Mind you, I am very, very economical with the information, also mindful of what I'm telling you because investigation is still running and these guys are on the run. Information that I've also picked on the ground is that most of these guys are either not native of Inawusu or um, Afro Kuku. So probably they are also, they may be foreigners who perpetrated this particular crime. But what triggered this particular crime? This is what I've gathered as far as, I mean, my information gathering in the Inawusu uh, area is concerned. So for some time now, they've been experiencing I mean, a uh, space of armed robbery uh, as, as far as mining activities in that particular for, uh, area is concerned. It's very normal in the mining community that that's the region where you see a lot of mining activities or vibrant mining activities. That place is also susceptible to um, uh, armed robbery operations mm. and what are you, especially in the Amancia enclave, mm. we hear of a number of robbery cases. The police have been shooting that particular area. Anytime you hear that the police have I want to have an attacking in this suit, killing an, uh, an armed robber right. in the major operation, then that particular I mean, area probably will mm. be linked to the Amansi entry because of the mine activity. And the same situation that the Yinausu community is also facing or ha has been, I mean, complaining of. But the Accra Book Room people are also saying it that even recently they caught some armed robbers and they, they handed oh. them over to the place. Mm. When they investigated, these guys did not come from Accra Bukum. So they are still at loss. Okay. Why the people of Nausu won't establish right. their own fact that mm. the people who they killed on the 16th of December were armed robbers. Bill, I thank you very much for this uh, update. And we'll come to you again at midday for some more detail. Uh, I pray that the issues do not um, be exacerbate and, and es es escalate as well so that uh, peace and calm will be in our country. But thank you very much.